COVID booster shot. We got our booster shot and we got our flu shot yesterday at the same time. So we both are having shivers and major symptoms. I don't say it's major. It's major, I'm dying. It's hard to do anything. Except watch Wheel of Time. <laughs> so Jake has actually read the book, as you guys probably know, and I haven't. We had completely two different perspective over the plot, the characterization and things like that, so. Yeah, we watched the show. We watched the first two episodes early. We saw the third one just right now. I'm skeptical about things. There are things that I don't like that they changed for sure. We're gonna first do non-spoilers and then we'll do spoilers. As always, I don't have any non-spoilers because I always want to spoil. Okay, but I want to hear as a, someone who hasn't read the books, what is your impression? It's just a, a, yeah. another show you see on TV. What do you think of it? I got the Lord of the Rings vibe a little bit. I really liked it um, overall. Hopefully when it gets to season eight, they don't ruin it like Game of Thrones. Did it feel like the pacing was rushed or it was it had a good tight pace? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Feel like the tone? Yep. How would you describe the tone? Sexy. Well, it is kind of sexy. It is kind of sexy. There's, yeah. It's sexy and bloody. I thought it was sexy, depressing, bloody. What did you think? I'm I'm down. This is fun. I, I like the darker tones they're going for. I mean, I get they're trying to appeal to a wider audience, and I, I really love The Eye of the World, you know? It has a special place in my heart, even though I read it not too long ago. I don't it, I can't imagine what it must be for, like, the long-term Wheel of Time fans. It's got to be really difficult. But there were things that I think were improved. The reordering of certain events. I will say tone-wise, a little too casual, you know what I mean? I think in the third episode, Rand says like, he says shit. He's like, what the shit? He doesn't say what the shit, but he says, says you, something you like that. You think that it should be more like noble kind of language? Well, not more, noble, more so. but it's like, there's not, it's not like casual, like everyday talk. I'll talk about the third episode. There are some scenes in the third episode I don't like. Thought the first and the second episode, I'm largely positive on it. They had to do certain changes and it worked mostly. It is by the third episode I start noticing this casual tone and the way people talk and it just started feeling, there was a scene in particular where it just felt like, is this Wheel of Time or is this just some kind of like people just hanging out in 2021? Well, I guess like coming from a person who hasn't read the books, I actually like that. They're I just thought... dressed like hipsters, just chatting. Well, I mean, I don't know about the dresses. I didn't care either way. I felt like it was more relatable. It made it more so that you can identify yourself with these characters. I know that this is really far removed into a fantasy realm, but at the same time, it felt like, oh yeah, I could see myself at that bar. Something I love about The Eye of the World and something I think is so underrated about it is this focus on the grime and the details and the dirt, but they also change the characters in a way where they're a little more world weary. When they go to Shadar Lagoth, La Shadar Lagoth. In the books, there's this, they are all so innocent. It's, that's that's what I'm kind of missing. Like right from the get-go, the characters are kind of jaded. Whereas mm. in the books, they're like kids. Well, I think that's a great transition to talk about spoilers actually. You should absolutely watch it because there are some kick-ass moments. I'm being a little too negative right now because they do so much right. I highly there's recommend There's a lot it. of potential. There's just, there's a, a whole world of potential here. It's, you know, it's more of an ensemble right now. Than yeah. a main character, and I really felt like I could really see how each person's story was evolving or moving towards a certain direction. A lot of it predictable. So, spoilers? Spoilers. Can we talk about characterization first? Yeah, go for it. Whatever you want to say. I felt like Egwene's character was the most lacking. Mm. You know, because from the beginning, she knew, and it, I hate to make this comparison, but I kind of felt like it was Paul from Dune, where it's like, from the beginning, it's like she knew that she was destined for, like, something bigger, and she was willing to leave her relationship with Rand for it. But Rand, for example, he wanted to stay in his village, but she always saw herself in a higher purpose. Granted, we've only seen three episodes, but it didn't do as much for character development. You know, for example, like Matt, you know, he's such a complex character. Like I know that you told me in the book, he's pretty, you know, dumb. But <laughs> in the in the show, I mean, there were times when I was like, what the hell? Why are you like, especially when they were at that place? What is that place called? Shadar Laga. And then he was stealing the knife. But they the set it up. They set it up really well with, well, with him they, stealing other stuff. But yeah, but I wanted to scream. In the book, it's just, they're innocent. It kind of works because they're so naive. They don't even know... They've never been to a city. They're just so. Like, but I, that's why I think like the fact that they're actually more grown in the show. It makes it they a problem. It makes it a problem if they were that naive. So you have yeah. to give it more complexity. And I think they did that for everyone. That's true. Except There's for a, a lot in the a eye blame. of the world where you go, well, they're young. You know, yeah. you forgive it. You're just, 
They're young. They're I'm young. sure. I mean, I haven't read it, but yes. But like in the in the show, you know, you can't I, do that. You can't do that because it would be like a too much of too they're, much they're of grown like grown ass adults. It's like yeah, you're using your writer's plot a little bit too conveniently. Perrin has a wife. <laughs> like, come on, they're like. Well, okay. So I felt like Egwene's character was the most lacking in development because she was already who she was meant to be almost in the very beginning, right? The person who guided everyone through this. Can I tell destiny. you how it is in the book with her? Yes. Okay, so they really front load like her and Rand's relationship because in the book they're they're young, but they aren't at that level where they're like dating each other. It's just they've had this idea since they were kids that they would end up together and that they were like promised for each other. Mm -hmm. But they aren't like fucking on like in the inn, you know, washing dishes, like what the fuck? Egwene values duty over love and Rand values love over duty. And the thing that I love about his characters thus far is that he goes from a person who's like, oh yeah, I don't believe in the dragon. I don't believe in these things. And then he re you really see him, especially when he's separated from Egwene. I know they're not as young as you, you know, you say they are in the books, but he becomes a man. And that's very evident in episode three when he's trying to persuade um, Matt into going to the tower. The other woman, I forgot her name, who worshiped the Dark lo Lord, basically, yeah. the Dark One. Um, it, it looked like he could fall for someone else. Rand in the book is just the most awkward. Like, I couldn't imagine Rand, like, having a conversation with a grown female like that without just, like, accidentally stabbing himself with his sword and then just, like, crying. One of the funny things I love in the books is that whenever... Where in Perrin's POV, when they're separated, he says, Oh man, I wish Rand were here. He always knows how to talk to girls. <laughs> and then in Rand's POV, he always says, Man, I wish Perrin were here. He always knows how to talk to girls. <laughs> wow. Yeah, but that did not come across in the screen at all. He seemed very smooth. It's a sexy show. There's yeah. lots of sex. There was a lot of sexual tension, I felt like. And a lot of gore. There's a surprising amount of gore. You Matt, know? Oh yeah, Matt goes like, Oh, if Nynaeve were here with us, she'd just be arguing with Miranda the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's, what hap that's how it that's goes. That's how it happens, yeah. <laughs> Um, I thought her sexual chemistry, do you want to talk about the sexual chemistry? Oh, with Lan? Mm-hmm. I thought, like, I was like, and I didn't know that they had something going on in the book, but, like, I thought they did a great job. Who would you say is your most favorite character thus far, as far as portrayal in the screen? Matt. Hmm. Barney Harris. And sadly, he's not going to be in the next season. Okay, can we talk about him a little bit? Yeah. I thought it, he had a brilliant, complex characterization. They because made him a lot more interesting. Yeah. Yes, because he comes off as a selfish person. But in episode three, you really see that he's not. Because he's doing all of these things so that he can get back to his sisters. Because his mom can't protect his sisters. This is an example, I think, of the show adding things that were good for the character. Mm -hmm. But what they did with Perrin, after he kills his wife, it's like he j it just weighs him down, but he's just sort of dull. I felt like it was a little dull. He's kind of boring. It, yeah. You know, the fridging trope of, you know, to motivate him to, for, towards something, I don't know. I feel like both his character and also Egwene's character is a little too passive. That's so true, and that's part of my problem. And I'm trying to figure out what it is. She's already made the decision to go From towards the this very, thing. Like, From the very, like, very beginning. beginning, yeah. But what's interesting about her character in The Eye of the World is that she's divided between a few things, you know, between Rand, listening to Nynaeve and being a wisdom. And then the third thing pulling her is Moraine. There's just a lot going on with Egwene trying to figure out her identity, what she wants to do. There's just something off for me with the characters and the, the, the dynamic between the characters. Rand and Matt in the books, when they're off and on their own, they're screwed. Like they, they're just so hopeless. Like they're just so dumb. Like they're so, they're dumb kids. Like they just don't know how the world works. They've been in a farm the whole time. You know, they've lived on a farm. Well, that's exactly the opposite. They're very like, very adult. Like, okay, you need yeah. to make sure you're, you have this job and do this thing. You know, even Matt, even though he's like pushing back and he's like, portrayed as somewhat more lazy yeah you know he's still very like you know methodical and he's he still understands real world well do you have anything else to say about the show i feel like we should wrap up one thing that's interesting to me is the premiere and talking to others who have also read the book and are big fans of the book itself they seem to not like the show I as noticed, much yeah. as new viewers it seems like new viewers like the show more than the fans of the books yeah actually creators of, of the game of thrones show were 
trying to lean away from it being a fantasy show. They're, they're trying to emphasize the non-fantasy elements, whereas I like that The Wheel of Time is very much embracing the fantasy elements, the badass magic. Like, well, I, that's, that's what I the like funny part. It. I felt like that's how it started in uh, episode one, yeah. that it was very fantasy-based. But as we're getting further along, it feels like it's more rooted in reality. All right. Thank you for watching. Um, we like the show. We're very excited for the new episodes. Yes. I'm really bummed that it's only one episode per week because I would really love to binge this. That's all I got. Cool. Bye.